statistics and excel hamlet harry potter and statistics let's take a deep breath hold it in for 10 seconds getting ready for a smooth soothing excel here we are in excel if you don't have access to this workbook that's okay because we'll basically build this practice problem from a blank sheet and therefore you can just open up a blank sheet and work from there if you do have access to this workbook there should be six tabs down below we're working two practice problems each of those practice problems having three tabs related to it the example tab in essence being the answer key the end result the practice tab having some pre-formatted cells within it so you can practice focusing in on the heart of the practice problem the blank tab having just the data set so we can practice formatting the cells as well as the heart of the practice problem in this case building a chart also note that i'm currently in dark mode i think that's easier on the eyes so i hope that doesn't throw anyone off i do recommend the dark mode if you're going to be uh, using excel a lot but the layout should be the same it's just going to be dark in the dark mode so let's go on over to the hamlet look at the hamlet problem see if we could solve the hamlet problem i mean we're not going to solve hamlet's problem he has a lot of problems but the problem that we're working with relation to Hamlet is gonna have uh, the data on the left-hand side, and then we're gonna be building this table uh, from the data, this graph from the data, this bar chart from the data. Now, if we go into the second tab, the practice tab, we've formatted the data on the left-hand side, so it's a little bit easier to go right to the heart of just using this to create our graph the the third tab just has the data on the left hand side and we'll practice formatting the cells and then organizing them and then uh creating the bar chart so we can practice the basics the essentials of excel as we go now note that if you don't have this data at all it's not too much data so you could just simply type it in if you so choose and you can work from a blank sheet you can also look this up online you can look up the word count for Hamlet. That's what we have in here, the word count for Hamlet. Uh, and then you can copy and paste that information into uh, your Excel worksheet, and then you'll have your data set, and we can basically move from there. Because this is our first practice problem within Excel, we wanna go over some fundamentals about Excel. So the first thing to note is that we can name any cell within Excel using this grid format, using the lettering up top, a b c d e f in this case and i think i was on f5 if i move down one two three four five f5 so this cell is f5 so we can name that cell that naming is also over here so it's in uh, f5 also note that if you start typing in a cell then you're going to be within the cell so if i just start typing here now i'm kind of within uh the cell and if if i click off of it now i'm off of the cell if i want to go back in here and start typing again if i simply click back on the cell and start typing it's going to overwrite what i did before right it's going to overwrite what i did uh let's undo that the undo one way you can undo is right here this this button is quite useful uh you can also have the keystroke uh, uh control z you know to undo and boom right so that's going to be a, a quite useful button so if you want to go in the cell then you need to double click on the cell so if i want to go to the end of that f i need to double click on the cell and now i'm in the cell and i can continue typing from there the other thing we just want to recognize is that if you put a, a formula into the cell they usually start with an equal sign so if you put an equal sign into the cell then if you start clicking on other things over here excel thinks that you're trying to create a formula and that's why it's you get this sticky bit right where there's a formula if you didn't want a formula you got to get rid of that equal sign and then you can basically move around again the same would be if you started with a plus a plus excel thinks it's going to be a formula so it's going to be you know stuck into it there and you're gonna have to delete that before you can basically move around again uh, quick recap up top this is what we call the ribbon up top many of the functions within the ribbon are going to be in the home page 
within the, the tabs of the ribbon, home, insert, page layout, formula, you've got the groups in each tab. So you've got the home tab with the group of the clipboard, the group of the font, the alignment, the number, uh, the style, and so on and so forth. So when you start using Excel, you'll probably intuit intuitively go to these items up top. But if you want to formally describe to someone where something is, you can say it's in the tab, home tab, it's in the group of font group, and then you're, you're narrowing down to this kind of box. So that makes it a little bit easier. This is your quick task bar down here. And most of this stuff is the default. These aren't in the default. I put these down here, but the undo is like in the default down here. And then this is your formula bar up top. So anything you type into a cell is also gonna show up on the formula bar, which is useful, especially if you're, you know, you're way out here somewhere, you're typing something like way out here and you're not in the cell anymore, right? But you could still see the formula kind of up top. All right, so those, those are just some essentials that we're gonna, that, that, are, that we kind of want to understand going into basically any practice problem. Now down here, you can increase the size. I'm at currently 160. I can zoom in like this, or I can hold down control and scroll up on my scroll wheel. So that allows me to zoom in and out, also quite useful. Now, typically whenever I start a new sheet in Excel, I, I like to see the numbers in a number format. So right now you can see in the home tab and the numbers group, we're in the general formatting. So typically I'll select the entire sheet and I'll put my baseline or underline formatting that I like to work in. You could do that with the drop down here, number group, uh, and format it up top, but I like to right click on it and then go to the uh, format cells. And then I'm in the number tab. It's currently in the general format. I'm gonna, I like going to currency, but then make the negative numbers uh, bracketed and red. And then I remove the dollar sign. And in this case, I don't need the decimals. So I'm gonna remove the decimals as well. And so that's my standard format usually for me. So I'll do that basically every time as my underlying data format. All right, and then in this data, sometimes it might be useful to put the labels up top. So this is actually the number of words uh, in Hamlet. Now, our, our idea here is that, hey, look, uh, obviously, if I just take the data of the number of words, then it's not the same thing as Hamlet. I'm losing meaning by just having a list of the words in, in, in this format. However, this format of the words can give us some information because it can tell us how often, uh, like Shakespeare uses particular words. You can do similar things with tropes and whatnot. And that might give you some information about how you know a, a writer uh, is pursuing his craft, right? So, and that could help that could be useful, even though it's not, we're actually not telling the story here with this word count. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a, a row up top. Now a few ways you can add the row. Most people might think if I'm gonna add the row, I'm gonna highlight this thing and then try to drag it down like this. I can try to drag it down. That's one way you can do it. Probably not the most efficient way. I'm gonna undo that. You can also highlight the whole thing and right click and cut it and then put it down here right underneath it. That's actually the same thing. I right click and pa I pasted it. That's actually the same thing as moving it the way we did it before. So that's actually a little bit f more efficient oftentimes. But what I really can do, there's nothing on the right side of the screen here. So what I wanna do is add a row above it. That's probably the easiest thing to do. So I can select the number one here and I'm gonna say this whole row, I wanna add something above it to fit my my headers. Now, if there was something on the right, I'd have to worry about doing it this way, but there's nothing on the right. So I can just right click and insert cells and that will insert an entire row. Uh, so hold on, it's, already, it's highlighting something. That's why get rid of the dancing ants, select and then insert. All right, so there it goes. Now, if there was something on the right, then I could still do it that easier way, but it takes, I can select like these two and say, I just want to insert cells above it and push everything below it down. I have to be careful if there were something below it with this technique, but there's nothing below it. So that's what I want to do. Right click, insert, and then I'm, I want to say shift the cells down.